I'm standing next to a stand of Japanese knotweed, and you can clearly see how tall it can stand. I'm about 5'6", and here we have a whole bunch of knotweed right here next to the road, and it's standing at at least, you know, 10 feet, probably 12 feet in some areas. Here you can see the square end of the Japanese knotweed leaf. Uh, what looks like a heart-shaped leaf is very much so until it comes to the part nearest the branch, which is extremely square. You can see good examples in all of these, especially in this large one right here. These buds, which stem from the branch, will have the flowers, which carry the seeds, which are well suited for wind dispersal. They will have their white flowers through July and August, beginning sometime around June. And that's really the most distinctive thing about the knotweed plant. It is good to know what Japanese knotweed looks like because the perennial species is an invasive ornamental plant originating from Japan. There it is known as Itadori and can be found on the slopes of volcanoes along with the native insects and funguses that regulate its population. However, in the Great Lakes region, there are no natural predators of Japanese knotweed, and this is why it thrives. There are many ways it may have arrived in North America from Japan, but it is commonly believed to have come from England. The plant was introduced to England in 1825 for its use in gardens. Sometime after that, Japanese knotweed was introduced into the U.S. as a form of erosion control. At present, knotweed is found all across the Great Lakes region. It is often found in neglected areas such as roadsides, unkept gardens, back lots, and along unhealthy stream banks. It can grow almost anywhere and thrive in even the poorest soil conditions. Japanese knotweed forms dense stands that crowd out all other vegetation, degrading the native plant and animal habitat. The perennial plant is difficult to control because it produces underground root-like stems which go on to produce their own roots and send shoots upwards forming new plants above the soil surface. These are known as rhizomes, and they create a deep, dense mat which makes the knotweed hard to remove, but highlights its value when trying to slow erosion. Besides Japanese knotweed's usefulness in attempts to control erosion, it can also be eaten. It tastes very similar to rhubarb and is a great source of vitamin C. Some cultures value it for its medicinal qualities, which are said to promote consciousness, sensitivity, and telepathy. Japanese knotweed is an economic threat. Millions of dollars are spent battling the invasive plant every year. The problem is much greater in the United Kingdom than it is in the Great Lakes region. It causes great damage to plant and wildlife biodiversity by creating heavy shade and thick ground cover. The rapidly spreading rhizomes destroy large sections of sidewalks and pavement, and sometimes even the foundations of homes. Herbicides can eventually destroy the plant, though it takes at least three years to do so. Grazing animals can control it, but never rid it completely. Biological agents are being researched, but none have been safely prescribed to combat the invasive plant. Hopefully there will be developments in our ability to slow and eventually stop its spread. With an increased understanding of Japanese knotweed, please do what you can to slow its destruction.